i am say, i am speaking about uh, prerequisites for uh, snowflake uh, hands on or snowflake work so first requirement is a sql sql is like a uh, part of the, our training so daily we write a lot of sql codes and we do entire processing so sql is part of our class so no separate sql is uh, as a training as a prior training to this particular course so second is data warehousing background this is the second request side okay so if anybody is already working in the data warehousing background that's fine so first we need to understand what is data warehousing so okay and uh, third requirement is any cloud so in this case either you will go with AWS or Google Cloud or Microsoft Azure. Okay, so three, in either of three, okay, I mean any of three. So I, I choose AWS as a cloud for our uh, uh, classroom purpose. The projects are like, so people may work in the GCP with Snowflake or whatever it is. So any cloud-based technology knowledge. So this is also covered as part of our course. So whatever the SQL we write, that would be processed in the cloud only. Okay. Yeah. And fourth requisite is uh, Unix. You should have a basic Unix knowledge because you should have a Unix uh, operating system. Using the Unix operating system only, you will be connecting to the uh, this particular place, even uh, basics of Unix. Okay. So some other areas people are looking for Python also. If you are already good, that's fine. So without Python also, you can run the ball. So Python knowledge is the one. Okay, SQL, I can say PL SQL as well. So using Snowflake also, we will work with the PL SQL. Okay, so first let me give a, let me start with the point number two. Okay, uh, I believe uh, you are new to the data warehouse in background. Let me take a small example. So by using this particular Excel, I'll try myself uh, and make you comfortable on the what is data warehousing. Okay, let us take a simple example of ABC Bank. Okay, so in this ABC Bank, what's happening here? Okay, I'll go like this. Let me take one more sheet and let me come back to you. Assume that you are a owner of a, a bank called as a ABC bank. So you have been running this bank from the past 20 years. Let us say you started the bank at 2000. Okay, now it is 20. Okay. So you started a bank because this is this is theory, but it is very important to understand what is Veros. That's why I'm spending some amount of time periodically. Okay. So 2000 to 2021 years, the bank has been, uh, you know, started. And let us say you have three branches, branch one and branch two and branch three. Now three different branches in the three different, different locations. Okay. So say this particular branch is uh, purely for your loan related operations. So say this is for stock market related operations and this is for uh, accounts related operations. So you have given uh, three branches. Okay, so branch one, branch one is a capable of holding almost, uh, okay, so 20, th say for example, daily transactions are, let us say, there are 2 million transactions are happening in the bank one and also say 
4 millions are operations are happening in the branch 2. So let us take 3 million operations are daily transactions. 2 million transactions, 4 million transactions, 3 million transactions are happening. Okay, so these are keep growing. Okay, so what happened? Uh, you have three different branches and three different transactions. Let us assume the complete data of branch 1 is maintained in the say SQL Server DB. Okay, so branch 2 is maintaining the data in, I mean backend data is in the form of the files. Okay, so this one is maintaining the data in say for example any cloud, say Salesforce. This is the data storage. Three different branches, three different volumes of a data. Okay. Okay, so storage of the data. Storage of the data. Now, this is what happening over past 21 years. Okay, there is a question arise. So, what is the profit of entire bank? For example, what is the profit of entire bank from 2015 to 2021? Right. So, they wanted to understand the what is the profit from say for example 2015 to 2020. They have taken a particular period of the uh, business and they wanted to find the what is the profit of this one. So, how do you say, how do you get a profit? Definitely, you need to consolidate the data of branch 1 and branch 2 and branch 3. All right. From 2015 to 2020. Okay. And then only you will answer. You need to analyze the data and then only you answer. Say, for example, what is the last say what is the uh, profit from branch 1 from 2000 to 2021 the day the bank started to till date what is the profit so again you need a data you have different different questions right so you have different different questions you need to understand the profit of entire bank or so you want to understand the performance of branch 2 or you wanted to understand the number of accounts in branch 3 so you will have a lot of questions on your data, right? So how this problem will be resolved? So to do this, actually what you need to do now, you need to bring up a data in one centralized place. So that is nothing but a warehouse. Okay. So you should have one common place for the entire data. Correct. So how this data would be coming? I believe the need of warehouse is you should have a storage right so that storage is nothing but a database only okay that storage is not something like uh, files or any other thing. usually that storage is a one of the database only that may be a sql server or that may be oracle or whatever it is okay so the how this should be this should be what is a data warehouse so it is a storage of data that is history of the data is a history of it. So then only you can say it is a warehouse. It should have a history of data from 2000 to 2021. Then only you will be able to answer the performance of the branch one. Okay. History of the data and it should be, it is integrated, right? Okay. Integrated means you have a varieties of the data, right? So different varieties of the data and different volumes of the data. You should integrate all of them and put it in your centralized place. And finally, one thing is called as a subject oriented. Subject oriented means subject is nothing but a business. A kind of business is a subject. Say loan is a one of the subject. So share market is a one of the business. Right. So account section is another business. Say mortgage you open a, a non-retail banking. That is a kind of the uh, business. Right. So credit card is a kind of a business. So mortgage is a kind of a business. So it should your warehouse should help you to answer with respect to the subject. So you wanted to find how many accounts are linked to the loan. Then the answer is more, the question is more towards a loan, right? Loan subject. So if you see a, a, a storage, usually a database. Okay. If you see a storage that exists, uh, that exhibits all these properties. Okay. That supports the history of the data that is integrated and subject oriented. Then you call it as a data warehouse. Okay, again, technically, it is a database. 
right so it's a database finally correct any questions here are you clear or you want me to stop fine right how this way data will be coming right so there is a question so you have a data and you will be having a averos Okay, this is a Veros. You call it as a EDW or EDWH. People will call different terminals. Enterprise data Veros. Okay, you call like this. How this data will be coming? That will be come by the ETL tools. Here you see two. I have taken three sources. So something like external data is another source. So three different sources. This yellow color boxes are three different kinds of the data. Okay, so. You should use some tools called as ETL tools. So you should use some tools and you need to pull the data in the various. What I mean to say, so these two volumes of the data and the four volumes of the data and three, three millions, I mean, two million, four million, three millions of the data is pulled and placed into the various by using the ETL tools. All I wanted to make you comfortable on the terminology, that's it. Okay, so the tools called as ETL tools like extract, transform, load. Okay, these are the ETL tools. Okay, using these tools, you build a Veros. So what are the various ETL tools? The various ETL tools are like, we have a lot of tools from different, different vendors. Some Something like we have different varieties of shoes from different companies, right? Same like, so you see Informatica is a one of the ETL tool from Informatica Corporation. Corporation is itself. Is, so SSIS is a one of the ETL tool from Microsoft. Data stage is a one of the ETL tool from the IBM. Right, so talent is a ETL tool from talent only. So Pentaho is a ETL tool from the Pentaho Corporation. Okay, a lot many ETL tools are there in the market. So using these ETL tools, you will build a Veros. So these tools are extract, transform, load tools. Extract the data and transform is if there is any change on it, you will transform the data and finally put it to the Veros. Okay, so this Veros, okay, don't worry about other parts of that. So these are the various CTL tools. Finally, what's your question? Let us take a question. What is the net profit of, what is the net profit of branch one from 2000 to 2021? This is the question you have, right? So to answer this question, first, you need to bring the data from the branch one. Who will do that? Our ETL tools will do that. Right. They will bring into the Veros. From there, you need to publish your report, right? So you are looking for a net profit in the form of a report, right? So there are some reporting tools are also available. So what are the reporting tools? Reporting tools are like. So Cognos is one of the reporting tools. Say this Cognos is from IBM. And SSRS is a reporting tool. Okay, and we have uh, some other reporting tools like, uh, what are they? Tableau. And uh, SSRS is out there. And also one more ETL tool is there. Uh, what is that? Uh, um, sorry. Hmm. Tableau and uh, micro micro strategy, not micro strategy. So SSRS and Power BI. Power BI is one more reporting tool. Is there? Click View, Click Sense. These are all for knowledge purpose only. So these are the various reporting tools. These tools will get the data from the enterprise warehouse and and it put it in a form of a report. Okay, so. So those are the reporting tools just for knowledge say say this this is where you see okay uh see the lineage see the flow so data is collected from the various places by using etl tools and build a varos from the varos reporting tools will come and uh, build the data and there is uh, one more thing called as a data mart data mart is a part of the data from varos okay you see this varos is meant for not only branch one questions right this varos is meant for not only specific for branch one or branch two or branch three. So it should, this is a Veros for your complete ABC bank, right? You will have other subjects as well, 
correct right so whenever you wanted to work with the part of the data you call it as a data mart so data mart is a subset of the data warehouse say here you are reporting tool is meant for branch one data only okay, right so in for this particular question your reporting tool is working for branch one only it should not pick a data from branch 2 and branch 3 right so then branch 1 data will be called as a data mart right so these are the data marts and data mining tools are there data mining is nothing but deep digging of the data so usually whatever we discuss is not at all coming under the part of data mining tools okay so this is the fundamental of a data warehouse architecture okay collecting the data and clean and putting into warehouse from there uh, use i mean uh, report it if need you can use the data mart also right coming back to the story yeah now before going to the introduction of the snowflake where are these Finally, this is your warehouse. Where is where is this warehouse is built? At? I mean, uh, where is this database is available? You can build this warehouse in the two places. What are they? Either you can build it in the on-premise. The next question. Where is the data warehouse is built? Right. So there are two places you can build. What is that? On-premise. On the cloud. Yeah, on premise. <laughs> there are two places you can build your warehouse. The on premise, nothing but your hardware, software environment where you will have a uh, your own operating system. So where you will have your own hardware, software. So there you build a warehouse, right? And one more place is a cloud. So this is interesting point to us. So on cloud means what are the various cloud services available in the market? Again. So there are various cloud services available in the market. So one cloud is from the Amazon side. So that is called as a Amazon and one more cloud is from the Google. So that is Google cloud. And Microsoft Azure. This is from Microsoft Corporation. There are three Google clouds. I mean, there are three cloud services are available. You can build your warehouse on any of this cloud it's depend upon your company's need depend upon your project need you will have this in the at the same time this is a place where you will do at the same time this company aws company or google cloud or google company or microsoft they have their own data warehouses okay so that supports all this process so this aws is a cloud is a cloud storage is a cloud service provider so as a cloud service provider aws has its own data warehouse okay what aws has its own data warehouse so that is called as a redshift redshift is a a warehouse in the aws all right okay but it is proprietary to the, I mean, the point is it is proprietary to the Amazon only. So, this is a Google warehouse. You can see this Google, for example, when you are uh, uh, opening a mail, so it is going to the Google Cloud, right? Google Cloud is nothing but a Google warehouse. So, uh, Microsoft Azure has its one warehouse. Okay. Finally, what I mean to say is uh, these are the cloud service providers, and along with this cloud service, they have their own warehouses. Okay. At the same time, uh, it has its own limitations, like Redshift is proprietary to the AWS only. So one day, for example, being a client, say you are ABC bank, right? So assume that you are facing some issues with AWS. Then you need to transfer your data from Redshift to the Google Cloud, right? So that is very hard task. Again, switching the entire uh, cloud is very difficult. So there are some other pain points as well. So pain points in the sense, so you should be have a expertise in the AWS related organization, right? You should have a, a AWS maintenance person, right? This cloud has to be maintained. So a lot of other things are there. So security should be provided 
and there are some other rules are there so roles are there so a lot of things are there don't worry about all of them but whenever you wanted to move your data your abc bank data across different clouds it is not possible so by keeping that in mind so there is one common cloud warehouse is introduced that is a snowflake snowflake is a cloud warehouse it's not a on premise warehouse snowflake is a cloud warehouse it is it is built up of any of the cloud so you can build snowflake on aws cloud or you can build snowflake on google cloud or you can build snowflake on azure also microsoft cloud wherever you wanted to build and at the same time this snowflake is a new invention actually so when people started uh, building the snowflake warehouse they started from the scratch i what i mean so they haven't taken the knowledge of any warehousing processing okay they haven't taken the knowledge of how redshift was built or how google warehouse google is built so that they have altogether invented a, a separate mechanism so to load your data permanently in a cloud warehouse so snowflake is purely a cloud warehouse any questions from here what is warehouse so where where do you build the warehouse so what are the various warehouses and uh, what is snowflake any questions all right no yeah clear yes. so let us go deep into that and we try to understand if you understand this slide i mean if you understand this uh, seven slides almost 5% of your work is done okay snowflake is a cloud data warehouse and it is a sas i know uh, i believe every one of you are aware about sas software as a service we are using lot of apps in our mobile right so whatsapp is a app and say a flight booking app is there lot of apps all are software as a service right so uh, being a app be, being a user of the app you are indirectly using one software yes or no so same like i'll tell a small example say you are traveling in a car you wanted to uh, uh, say for example um, you no need any setup actually you are traveling in a car you wanted to run your production job or you wanted to do your office work that is possible through the snowflake you can open your snowflake application from your mobile and you can start working on it if really a priority task is assigned it's as simple as that you no need to have a, a separate setup in order to work with the snowflake that's where actually snowflake marketing was started anyways so it is a cloud data warehouse i believe you know what is data warehouse now. so and it is a best example for software as a service you just simply use it as a app i mean use it in your mobile or you can use it in your uh, personal laptop wherever it is your data is in the cloud right you can access from anywhere okay sorry to interrupt i just uh, got a doubt uh, i just want to know how do we use uh, snowflake in redshift or any cloud provider redshift is a um, aws warehouse redshift is a redshift is also working like a snowflake but it is only proprietary to the aws there is a requirement okay. you will be there is a possibility that you will move the data from redshift to the snowflake got it thank you so instead of okay instead of redshift or instead of a google warehouse we are using an independent warehouse that is called snowflake yes you it's up okay. to you so there is a, there is a project yeah, yeah. that my client wanted to replace the redshift with snowflake it is possible okay my client wanted to replace the oracle on premise with snowflake that is possible yeah thank you Getting? So, Snowflake enables data storage, processing, and analytic solutions are faster, easier to use, and more flexible than. So, this is a very important point. The storage is what is the storage here? As I told you, any cloud. Okay. So, Snowflake is a warehouse, right? It is a. It supports a huge storage. Where the storage is really, that's in a cloud. Okay. So that's why enables you can you can enumerate. I mean, you can keep adding the data how much you want. okay so it enables data storage processing processing means it's back end engine okay it's architecture I, i'll tell you the architecture also then you will get more clarity and process so processing is completely black box to you okay you no need to be worrying about it you see 
if you see um, i have actually completed one project so 40 percent processing is saved when we moved the data from redshift to the snowflake so processing is very faster because of its architecture and analytical solutions means i mean uh, it supports you for reporting also say from the snowflake you wanted to connect tableau and publish your report it's possible so that is the it's it's data storage and processing capability are very faster and easier to use as i told you okay. so it's a simple window you no need to have i'll i'll show you a snowflake login one window you will do everything so very easy to use tool I, i'll show you a tool okay very easy to use and far more flexible far more flexible means you have very you have only one link so for the entire operation so you can easily migrate your code from one place to other place say you wanted to move your code from the development to production i believe freshers sir freshers may not understand development to production means it's a code migration something like um, Hmm. So you build a car, right? So day one itself, you will not put your car on road, right? First, you need to develop all your so individual parts and processing capabilities, right? That is nothing but development. So then you deploy your code into the production lines. Then your car will go to the on road, right? Something like that. So far more flexible means you can easily do your migrations from development to the other environments. Okay. How is it possible? So why I am saying so simple? Yeah, right. So so simple is very tough, right? Yeah. How is it possible miss as i told you snowflake is not uh, copied from any other uh, technologies right so logics is not copied or uh, invention is it's a completely invention right so it's it didn't take the help of any existing cloud based technology it's a complete new architecture is built so that architecture is this one okay snowflake architecture before getting into architecture uh, first let me give some similarities between uh, what is your on-premise warehouse or i can say as an on-premise warehouse or non-snowflake warehouse okay and to snowflake so very simple maintenance so very simple maintenance is if you are already working say say college for example let me give a best example you are doing your lab exercise in your college right so what do you do you will have a separate system for your own exercise and as well as you will have a separate administrator right when your system is crashed what do you do uh, you call your administrator right in the same way in our companies also there is a administrator for every technology you will see roles like database administrator database developer right so same like uh, amazon case also as a cloud based administrator and developer you will see different roles like this correct and also when administrator is coming to picture you will have a client server mechanism right in your college you have one centralized server from there you launch your applications for your online examinations right same way uh, in our companies also you will have a server right where you will be maintaining the complete server uh, if you are already from oracle background you will see a separate server sitting in a separate room where you will have a lot of setup and a lot of cooling mechanisms are there hardware software setups are there right here no server based environments especially snowflake side you won't see a role like snowflake administrator that's completely non-existing role okay there is no server available and when there is no server available so you no need to maintain about a maintenance maintenance means no licensing no patching right uh, if you are already working uh, you know every weekend your administrator is sitting in an office and uh, he will be working on some patches new releases right say casper sky i believe i'm using very simple terminology Cas uh, daily a new version of casper sky is coming to the picture coming to the market right every time so you need to update your antivirus am i right in the same way so oracle started at 7 now oracle 14g or 15g is there a new version is coming up you need to upgrade your systems and you need to shut down all your developments for some time so licensing cost patching upgrades you will be completely freed up with the, all these th things when you work with the snowflake okay so minimal cost and zero infrastructure that's why people are moving from on-premise to the snowflake you may place in a project that you need to migrate your project from on-premise oracle to the snowflake or on-premise equal to the snowflake right so 
so many are interested now getting into the cloud that is the first interest in the cloud again they are trying to make a uh, warehouse snowflake that's why you see the past six months 30,000 clients are added in the snowflake area that's where the people are getting a lot of demand because of this lot of cost so one day it would be very easy i mean you no need to cut your fruit simply you just eat the ripened fruit that's it so things are looking like this whatever it is simple infrastructure cost so no database setup for example even in the colleges also when you are when you want to work with the sql uh, you should install your software right so somebody should come and install your software and even in the same case in your organization also so uh, some you need to raise a separate request uh, for installation of the software right so no separate setup is required simply launch it like this whenever you log in you just get into the snowflake right so no setup maintenance and no software is required in fact so simply launching a url is sufficient okay this is again so maintenance is time consuming and cost is added and it is not so scalable also right so you wanted to increase your server space again you need to buy a new space right but here as this application as this warehouse is uh, built on top of a cloud so it's very scalable and on demand you will you will scale right so today you have two terabytes of data for your warehouse is required so all of a sudden uh, your warehouse data is going down and you need only 500 gb on demand you can reduce this okay you, are, you will be you will be charged as per that only so that's why i'm telling it's scalable and on demand and again cloning you know cloning right so cloning means uh, you wanted to move the data from one database to other database within a way or a kill so that is a very difficult part right even so cloning you see in your colleges also so you created a table and you wanted to move it to a different table right that kind of cloning operations are very easy so the spinning up is very easy okay so these are the some of the advantages so very less infrastructure cost no database setup and maintenance no software is needed so it's a, a so scalability is very easy and cloning operations and data related operations are very easy right so how are these possible again the my answer is the architecture so architecture is very crucial part of the snowflake okay so this architecture has divided into three parts one is a warehouse warehouse in the sense so compute so compute layer second layer is a compute layer so first layer is a storage layer and finally third layer is a service layer okay architecture also looking so simple not many uh, arrows right not many arrows and uh, squares and rectangles and no complex links right in the architecture it's simple so sim storage layer so compute layer and service layer the storage layer is is nothing but a cloud storage what is the cloud it's your opinion i mean it's your requirement right either the cloud would be uh, uh, aws or it's a microsoft or google cloud whatever the cloud you need your data is residing on the cloud okay so how is this residing i'll explain you uh, uh, data is there in the cloud and second one this is a very important part so compute it's a virtual warehouse don't think that virtual warehouse is a storage warehouse is a storage snowflake is a cloud warehouse virtual warehouse is nothing but a cap processing engine okay it is a processing engine so you this symbol setting symbol is there right the setting symbol is nothing but your warehouse okay depend upon your need you can opt your warehouses say it's something like um, driving a car you want to drive fast increase your speed or you want to drive slow you can increase how many people are sitting in your back end is or how many people are sitting in your car is not really matter to you you wanted to uh, process your data very faster process it or you wanted to go with the medium fast you can go so it's all depend on computing is in your hand i'll tell you a simple example okay so maybe that will help you uh, to understand more okay maybe i am running a i have a table called as a customer table of one terabyte Say this table is in a SQL Server, Oracle DB. Anywhere, either on premise or cloud. Customer one terabyte, and let us say 450 columns are there. Okay, 
I'm running a query like this. Select star from the customer. What is happening? From past 10 minutes, the query is keep running. So can any one of you uh, give me the reason why it is 10 minutes? Any any wild guess, just like a small quiz. Since it's why it is taking 10 minutes? Yeah, data is more, right? And yeah, data is more. That is a suitable answer. And why 10 minutes? Bandwidth is less. How do you say bandwidth is less? Means but the processing is. Yeah, you mean. Yeah, please tell me. Our bandwidth capacity is low when compared to the terabytes of data to transfer. Maybe. Compute power. Computing power is less. Yeah. Right. What you guys are saying. So your, your storage and computing are coupled together, right? You wanted to pick a uh, uh, one person out of thousand persons. So your processing is slow. Then you then only by that's the reason you are not able to find the right people. Correct? So here why the storage and processing are coupled together. That's why it is taking a lot of time. So you have a 1 TB of storage and your processing engine is also very slow. Correct. So that's where actually the Snowflake uh, inventor started thinking about it. I am, my, my query is running slow because the processing and storage is clubbed, is coupled together. When we decouple, what will happen? They started thinking from that area. That's why they introduced the processing engine as a separate engine. So here storage and processing both are separated. This is a certification question actually. Okay, so processing is separate and storage is separate. Just, just now I said a car example. Use uh, in your uh, back seat, say 10 people are there, no problem. Still you wanted to go faster, you go faster. So processing and storage is decoupled. Okay, processing is separate and storage is separate. Let us take, uh, let us understand the same statement from here. Here. This is your data. You have three departments like marketing department, finance department, and one department for testing purpose, and one department is using the for ETL ETL tools. Right. So you see, you in your marketing, you need more data. I mean, you need to perform more operations. Then you will have, then you see more computing capabilities. Finance side, you have only two because your requirement is for two warehouses. And for this is a testing purpose. So one warehouse is sufficient. ETL is also simple in this particular case, one warehouse is sufficient. So depend upon your need, you can choose your processing. So uh, that is the major breakthrough of the snowflake. Got it. So the third layer is services, right? You are storing the data and you are actually uh, adding your warehouses as per your need. Or, so uh, and who will be managing all this stuff? So that is nothing by the service layer. You have a different, different uh, uh, agents are looking into the different, different services are there. They are actually making sure that when you are picking marketing data, you should not get finance data, right? When you are working with three warehouses, you should not be uh, running in a slow phase. Okay. Uh, I mean, when you are working with one warehouse, it's slow. Three, it should be your faster. It should be faster. That's why you have all these services. So optimization. So management, management is a guy. So that allows the right person to enter into the snowflake. So marketing guy should be a valid guy, right? So somebody should be authenticated, right? So, and also storage maintenance. Okay, so, and also there is a person to monitor the uh, fastness of your warehouse, correct? So management is uh, one of the services and transactions. Transactions means operations are keep going and coming out. So for example, this is a snowflake. From Snowflake, let us assume Tableau is generating a report out of it. So some transactions are used by the reporting tool. So this will be taken care about and security. You know, there are different roles, right? In your college or in your company, there are roles are there, right? So say student is a role and faculty is a role and principal is a role, senior software engineer is a role, senior software engineer is a role, right? So same like uh, how naturally we are working snowflake is also providing security in the form of roles okay there are roles called i'll explain the roles admin role user role uh, so and uh, 
user admin role various roles are there the security this this service allows the right person to enter into the right place right and metadata you know metadata so everything is a metadata correct so lot of let us assume let let me say the same query i ran in the snowflake it ran in a minute for example right so somebody should tell you that okay this come this this query has been run in a minute so that is nothing but a metadata right it's a data about a data so originally how pick the data but this is speaking about and also how many columns are fetched out of 450 all 450 are fetched by this query correct select star i believe select star is very simple query to understand all columns are fetched so that columns are nothing but a metadata am i right so uh, that will be maintained by the metadata so this is a very vast and you have uh, everything in your plate using this service okay I, when i open the tool i'll tell you so you will have everything in your hand this serve metadata service okay you no need to go a separate place i'll tell you one more example uh, i'll tell you with this query that example today how many records are there one tb correct this is a day one scenario day one you have one tv there is a developer day two he dropped a, for example uh, 500 gb of the data so how many are there by this time maybe uh, nearly let us assume so uh, more than 500 gb a guy is deleted and only this one say on the day 30th or day 55th okay you wanted to find the data how many records are there in day one you wanted to see how is it possible okay so day one one tb day two 500 gb and day 55 say some other day i mean you wanted to see the number of records of day one so somebody is asking yeah, how many records were there there in the day one who will answer this again you need to go back to your administrator okay, if you are already working you see that otherwise you need to go to your administrator say administrator this developer is a x and administrator is y you need x will ask y uh, give me the data amount of the data and day one what he will do this guy will go to the day one again he will start fetching all his logs he will go to the day one and he will give the answer how long it will take definitely it will take 10 to 15 minutes coming to the snowflake in the in the tool itself you can you you have your own metadata so you can travel back so up to 90 days or you can travel back up to few number of days and uh, being a developer x no need to depend on y because y role is not at all existed right so x himself can go and find the data so on a particular day one so such kind of facilities are there actually okay that is also come under the metadata okay that is a metadata is maintained by the tool itself metadata is maintained by the same developer itself in fact that kind of service is provided by this okay storage is a cloud storage virtual computing is a computing capability that is in your hand and storage and uh, uh, processing is decoupled and to organize all these things we have set of services optimization is nothing but i, I forgot optim optimization is nothing but uh, your query optimization see within a minute i am getting this result how this optimizer is working based on your need management is managing the data and um, so managing the all other services transactions means when you when data is coming in and out of the tool this service will take care so authentication and metadata is nothing but complete maintenance of your operations any questions here same is selling centralized management metadata separate from the storage and computer full transactional consistency any questions we are going to work on this architecture only we will build our by the time when you are working in your company what do you do now you build your storage and you build your warehouses and you start using this okay i believe uh, all of you are good so uh, right so there is a question from intelligent guy same structure same kind of architecture you will see in the redshift also okay i, I told you right redshift is also a cloud warehouse amazon proprietary cloud warehouse right you see a similar kind of discussion in redshift as well but what is the benefit here so why i need to choose a 
snowflake means the answer is the benefits first answer is architecture second answer is the benefit these are the some benefits out of this okay okay snowflake never mind Okay. So these are the few other benefits. First is it's completely SQL. You no need to write a separate. Uh, I mean, you you always write your query for this. You always write a SQL. So once you know the SQL, it's easy to use. So somebody wanted to switch into the Snowflake set, it's very easy. Simply they'll write as SQLs only. It is not uh, coming out of any traditional uh, uh, approach of working with database. So. From Oracle also using Oracle database and you write SQLs on the Oracle, right? SQL Server you write SQL, Teradata you write SQL and uh, Salesforce also you write SQL, right? Even for big data systems also you write SQL. So it's a completely SQL database. Zero management I already explained you. No patching required, uh, no database backup required, right? No administrators required. So this is the one I wanted to help you. Okay, all of your data. So all of your data means, if you see the architecture, it is responsible for your complete data. Okay, means, as I told you, say this example, day 55, you wanted to find the data of day 1. Not only operation guys, you wanted to find the data of day 1. Okay, day 2 you have 500 GB, by day 2 some amount of data has been deleted right so still you wanted to fetch the data of day one it is possible that is called as a time travel i believe you know time travel so time travel means traveling back over a particular period of time and get the information from that point right so that is nothing but a all of your data all of your data is nothing but time travel you can travel back to a particular point of your data uh, uh, and you can get a uh, the data from that point not only the statistics you will also get a data from that point that is very important that is means what it means it is promising for all your data so your data is nowhere lost uh, and one more thing i'll tell you if you drop a table it's very hard to recover in that system even when you are working in college or in your system a guy is working in a production system and he dropped a table what would be the resultant? So consequence would be a pink letter, right? I saw many people uh, working as an administrator in the production got pink slips because they dropped a lot of tables. But in, a, in the snowflake, you can undrop it actually. So once you drop it, you no need to worry. You can undrop it. Not only the table metadata, you will get a data as well. Right? So it is promising that your data is not at all lost. Okay. All of your users. So as I told you, different roles are here. So administrator is there, users are there, lot of people are there. So it is promising you that everybody is secured in a such a way to access their suitable data. Correct? Right. And very important point is pay for what you use. Pay for what you use means day one, day one, one terabyte data, say you are charging for $55 for example. Okay. Day 2, how much amount of the data? 500 GB only. 500 GB means you will be charged for $25. Say for example, $20 or whatever it is. Snowflake is giving that economical benefit. You are paying for what you use. Okay, you no need to uh, pay extra charge for your burger. Okay, what you eat two burgers, pay for two burgers. Something like that. So pay what you use. Okay, so this I will explain more in detail. But this is a best breakthrough of a snowflake. Okay, even I told you one small example. My I worked in a project from Redshift to the snowflake. You believe me, almost uh, forty thousand dollars are saved. No, per month. With respect to the operations, forty thousand dollars are saved per month. That is the biggest breakthrough clients are observing nowadays. And again, live data sharing means. So again, this is there in the other other areas also. So you can you wanted to share your data to the different roles to different users, so they can easily share. Say, I mean, uh, you can share it to the Tableau user and Click user. It's possible. Okay. 
So it's possible across various systems. So it is a completely SQL based database. You will be maintaining maintenance cost is zero and it is promising you that your data is not lost. Physically, you drop a table, you can undrop like, as a best example for all of your data and time traveling is a feature available. Okay, so all of your users, how data is being secured. So users are also secured. You are paying for what you use. Okay, that is uh, one more. Uh, these are the some of the key fin key benefits of the Snowflake. Okay, so and uh, see this one. As I told you, Snowflake is not at all compatible to a cloud-based service, right? So Amazon Redshift is a warehouse, and uh, Microsoft Azure Data Warehouse is a data warehouse of a Microsoft, and Google BigQuery is a data warehouse of Google. He is trying to in this slide. I am trying to differentiate between the advantages and disadvantages of Snowflake. See, you will see performance is low in Google one and uh, throughput is low here. And uh, you can see all these things. JSON scans, JSON file scans is very easy here and it's somewhat difficult in Redshift. So you can see this table. OK, I'll tell you. So geographically, 2% of the people are using Snowflake with Google BigQuery. And 40, 40, not 40, almost 60 to 65% of the people are using Microsoft uh, Azure with the Snowflake. And around 30% of the people are using the AWS with this one. I am myself personally, I am not from the Azure background. I am from Amazon background, but you should be compatible enough to uh, learn the other cloud various also depend upon your project need. Okay, this is what uh, I can say. Any doubts from this place or from this slide? How deep we need to learn the other clouds? Is it like only to operational view, like uploading like a, for S3 like that for AWS? So similar way for the uh, Azure yeah. and uh, GCP or uh, we need to understand more like uh, administrative point of view? No, no, no administrative. It's just a basic knowledge of the cloud is sufficient. Okay. okay. So tools wise, I'll tell you uh, tomorrow. So I mean, yeah. so how to log in into that. Um, Theoretically, any doubts? So I can can I move forward? Yeah, you can go to the Google. So simple say. Uh, coming to the Snowflake, there are three different flavors of Snowflake. One is a Snowflake.com. You can just go like Snowflake.com. You can start your 30 days free trial here. Okay. You need to put your first name, last name, your company. Okay. So, say for example. Well, any email you can give. Okay, you can give any company. See this step. Okay, this is the steps you should also follow. Okay, so go to snowflake.com and you can see three editions of the Snowflake. Okay, you can go with standard, enterprise, or business critical. Something like you have a uh, three versions of your software, right? So standard is uh, 30 days only. Okay, so this what I am telling now, I am trying to tell you how to build your snowflake link so how to log in into snowflake i'm explaining you okay first step is go to the snowflake.com then fill your details so fill up application form here you can choose standard enterprise or business critical business critical is not so um, easy you can choose enterprise so you will get a this is a time travel multi clustering i'll explain choose enterprise okay you will get some more benefits what is this time travel multi cluster these are the three conceptual benefits i can say so you'll get standard your login would be valid for 30 days this is a free guys so no uh, uh, cost is paid here okay and then you choose your cloud provider this is the steps you, you will be following in your organization also okay so enterprise edition 
edition, your edition is enterprise edition and these are the steps you need to repeat in your practice sessions also and choose your cloud provider AWS and this is important you are from which region okay so you just agree the terms and conditions and get started so your account is being set up now okay you will get an activation mail to your gmail okay so let us go and check here use your username any valid username you can give this is the trial version guys but uh, your when you are working so this will be given by your uh, team member one of you will be a, a creating such kind of users or is up to you but this is not a standard practice so you will get this username from the uh, one of your team members okay Got it? You are into the so you can you can minimize it. That's it. This is how you will be logging into the tool. This is your tool, guys. This is the place where you will call your stuff. Okay, see this is a username, this admin. Very important thing is I wanted to explain this link to you. Keep your link ready for future reference. So see the link this is your id given by the gv58248 right this is id given by the snowflake organization to you so this is the id for this guy Ragavai IP. okay so this is a region ap south one you know ap south one is nothing but uh, asia pacific mumbai is a south one i think that is a government uh, regulations right okay and your cloud aws and this is called as a snowflake computing so i told you three flavors of snowflake is there one is snowflake computing second one is a snowflake company snowflake.com and third one is a snowflake community i'll i'll show you one by one now so this is your console console nothing but working place right so internal console and worksheet so i am in this worksheet right this is the place where i write all the queries look star from blah 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 that's why it's a worksheet so you just keep all these things ready with you okay so you can keep this you should have this kind of url okay this kind of url you will be getting it is again a secured url https so without https it's suspicious right okay so HTTPS and this is your Snowflake ID and the region and cloud provider and Snowflake flavor. So computing that. Once you get into that, you are ready to start your hands on. Right. Uh, before getting into the uh, stuff, I want to show you Snowflake.com. This is one of the Snowflake flavor. See, this is where you will see Snowflake.com, where you see lot of solutions marketplaces you you may write all your certifications or uh, you will write you will have your partners so i mean what and all other partners are available like any official website of the snowflake and second one is a snowflake community computing you have seen right snowflake community so lot of things are happening here you register in the community okay so you see what's happening in the snowflake community okay, you can get started and join here you can you wanted to just register here i think my page is being open you can register here, right so now get back to the sheets you see here very plain and simple right so no no sub menus no new menu edit menus no such kind of sub menus are there right so you will have a database shares data marketplace warehouse worksheets and history okay history is nothing but i'll show you what is history and uh, this is a username okay partners are partners you see lot of partners are there i told you almost thirty thousand partners are added in the snowflake side right these are the few of the partners i'll data world data space data iq 
data robot these are various companies informatica is a company metalin is a company okay so click view is a reporting tool as i told you uh, okay talent is a etl tool and these are the various partners okay so there is partners available and this is a help document so help document is really nice document so a lot of people are getting into the tool with the help document only just read the document you will be get familiar with this tool and the snow site is a recent one launched here so it's a sub, separate uh, a classic version of this snow 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 flake okay and this is a role as i told you uh, snowflake is working on the roles whenever you log in you will be tagged with a role called as a admin role you join in a day one right so being a student you will be tagged in as a first year student right by default same like so when you join in a company you will be logged with us you will be tagged with their role like software engineer same like a role here that role is a sysadmin is a default role you wanted to uh, uh, go your roles i mean you wanted to change your role again that is a lot of discussion you have a separate admin account admin role right as i told you uh, there is no separate person is required one of your developer is a account admin so he will be taking care about creating this kind of user sandal i'll explain more don't worry so just get a glance on the tool okay so account admin is their public security admin these are the few users okay all right so go to let's go to worksheets and see here once you log in into the system okay let us let me help you understand with the architecture okay what are the things in architecture storage cloud storage which storage you have selected already you have selected amazon right that is nothing but aws next is these are the warehouses right so where is it this is nothing but your warehouse compute underscore wh is a processing engine okay this is the default given by the snowflake you wanted to create your own custom warehouses you can build and do okay i'll explain more so these are the roles so where are the services usually you won't see any services right you are, this is a back end operation you cannot see here okay which service is running now i logged in with the sysadmin role right which service helped me the security and management security helped me to authenticate and the management has given this role okay these services are working in a background all right so next observation is uh you have different uh, databases demo db is a sample database and you will have a one more sample data given and util db three databases are given for your operations right uh, let me try a table select star from information you can you need to expand it okay say i'll, I'll go like this i'll go to this demo db public no tables available right okay util db or else i'll go with this db so customer table right see once you click here automatically database name schema name and table name is coming up that's what the meaning of easy to use let me go with the limit So you got three records right okay so this is the place where you write all your worksheet so we start building our own hands-on stuff here okay, any questions on login stuff guys how do you need to log in i'll tell you once again just for your reference go to snowflake.com Snowflake log, or else you can go with Snowflake login also. Anything, so whichever is such. Okay, go to login snowflake.com. Start your free trial. There you need to fill a form. After that, select your uh, edition of the Snowflake. 
and then you will be choosing your uh, some, uh, something like let me call like this you are getting here so continue you need to choose your edition and cloud provider and then you will get a mail to your mailbox just activate it by providing the username and password and you will be getting into this place any questions here right coming back to our practice so when you observe this tool it will take you okay automatically it will take you so all you need to do is put an observation and second requirement is a lineage lineage means data flow is very important to, to be successful in the project first is observation observing this tool second is a lineage lineage is nothing but a flow so simple like um, a water is coming into your pot right so you see a water tank is sitting somewhere on the top of your building right from there your water is traveling to the lot of pipes and lot of transformations right so it is going say you are living in a ground floor and your tanker is on the 10th floor so it's all the way your water is traveling from 10th floor to ground floor through the different uh, channels right so through different pipes same way you need to start think about lineage flow is important so from where data is started where it is going so that part i wanted to help you tomorrow okay so uh, what and all the places something like this